The octet rule gives us a good way to understand what elements form the ions they do, and it gives us a good way to understand why elements form covalent bonds, but it is not perfect. In this video, I'm going to go on and talk about some of the drawbacks that the octet rule does have. This should give you some context of what Gilbert Lewis was working with. This was a periodic table that was used in 1904. This may have been the arrangement of the periodic table when Gilbert Lewis formed the octet rule, if not very similar to it. When forming ions, the transition metals right here and the inner transition metals right here do not apply to the octet rule. Transition metals form, oftentimes form more than one ion. An example would be copper, uh, which forms a positive charge of one and two. Boron does not lose three electrons to have a charge of positive three. This would make boron very unstable since it only has five electrons. Carbon does not lose four electrons to have a, a positive charge of four, and it doesn't gain four electrons to have a negative charge of four. The covalent bonds, there are three categories where the octet rule does not work. First category is when an element has an odd number of valence electrons. The second category is an incomplete octet. The third category is an expanded octet or elements that are hypervalent. An example of a covalent bond that does not follow the octet rule that has an odd number of valence electrons would be nitrogen. Nitrogen has five valence electrons and we look when we look at ammonia, which would be NH3, ammonia fits very well with the octet rule. There's two electrons with each bond, so each bond would be two, four, six, and then the two lone pairs on the side would be eight. But if we would try to use the octet rule for ammonium, which would be in H4, it would no longer work because each hydrogen would have one electron in the valence shell, and the nitrogen has five valence electrons in the valence shell. So in order to make a molecule with nitrogen and four hydrogen atoms bonded to it, it would end up being, it would end up having nine valence electrons instead of eight. So one hydrogen would give a single bond and it has two electrons on it. Another hydrogen would give a single bond and it has two electrons on it. A third hydrogen would have a single bond and it would have two electrons on it. And if we put a hydrogen with an electron in the, in the valence shell to this, we would end up having three electrons and, and this would not work for the octet rule. We deal with this with what is called a coordinating bond. I won't go over it now, but um, I'll make a video on it to describe how we deal with that scenario. An example of a incomplete octet would be with the element boron. Boron has three valence electrons. A common molecule is boron trifluoride. So each fluorine has seven valence electrons and they bond to the boron like this. There's one or two bonds and a sigma bond where fluorine has eight valence electrons. The second bond has two electrons where it would have a single bond, making the fluorine atom complete an octet of eight valence electrons. And the third fluorine would have a single bond with two valence electrons and it would have a complete octet. So the boron does not have an octet, and the octet rule would not work with this example. There are some cases where boron will accept a lone pair of electrons, and it will complete the octet. I won't go into that right now, but um, boron with a total of six valence electrons is satisfied and stable, so it does not follow the octet rule. So examples of expanded or hypervalent elements would be, or molecules would be um, phosphorus chloride, where there are five bonds to chlorine, and each bond would have two electrons, so this would add up to 10. So two, four, six, eight, 10, and this obviously doesn't follow the octet rule because phosphorus has 10 valence electrons. Another one, another common element that's used in compounds is sulfur, and this can have up to 12 valence electrons. Expanded octets often happen in the third period where an additional orbital is introduced, um, which is the d orbital 
we haven't got into um, these different types of orbitals. Uh, it's a, it's what what is called as a subshell, and um, we haven't got into that yet, but we will soon. But that's what's happening, and it introduces uh, another set of orbits. And when that happens, it doesn't follow the octet rule. Another common element that has hypervalency is iodine. An example of hypervalency with iodine would be a compound called IBX.